Good morning. Good morning. Okay, I'm feeling better today. I thank you for those who hung with me a little bit on Friday and I was under the weather and I don't know, I drank some of that old path tea. I don't know if y'all have ever had it, but oh my God. Old path is really good. It when the, the taste is uh is remarkable because you know it tastes like when you used to play outside, a little bit of mud pie juice, you know. But uh but I feel better. I woke up Saturday morning feeling much better, rested uh well Saturday, uh Friday night and tried to rest a little bit Saturday and Sunday. Not as well because I, I have so many deadlines I'm meeting, but I'm just going to say good morning, good morning. I am so happy to be here. And uh, sometimes we just never know that when we need to rest. We need to ju do just that. We need to rest. And um, I've always, good morning, Joan, I've always taken uh, uh, this thing where I didn't worry about, you know, how much rest I got, how much sleep I got. Um, even when I was working on my doctorate, I always had... You know, I always worked a full day, never use, you know, my my work time to do my what I call my extra my extracurricular, which in that case was getting getting my degree. So sometimes you just you departmentalize and you think you you can do it. You can do it. You can do it. And sometimes you can't. You have to own up to the fact that as your body tells you it needs to rest and it's starting to give you little signs with you know, okay, I'm tired, I don't want to do that, I, you need to rest, you need to rest, you need to pay attention, you know, because even though I've dropped a lot of weight over the years, <clears throat> I still have high blood pressure, because it it is in my family, we had high blood pressure, cancer, you know, diabetes, we have it all, we have it all, and uh, thank God that he's only given me the one so far, you know, and I'm 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 prayerful that I won't get anything else. I'm prayerful. But I just say good morning to you. Good morning, good morning. And uh, today we're going to talk about what we see. And a lot of times we see, we see other people, but we don't see ourselves. We do not get there. We don't get there at all. And so in this case, we want to talk about do you see yourself as well as seeing everything else? Good morning, Ashley. Um, you want to you wanna talk about in your vision, does it include the fact that you need to look at yourself? And sometimes we don't do that. We don't do a good job at it. We do not. So I'm going to ask you this question. Are you stuck? Periodically. We're all going to be stuck. Going to be stuck on so many things. Things we didn't think we'd ever be stuck on, we get stuck on, you know. Um, and we just need to say, this is a period I'm going through. I need to be prayerful. I need to sit still. I need to to uh, search out the best resource for myself. How can I help myself? How can I look at myself and come out where if this ever hits again, I know how to handle it. And sometimes we don't. You know, we don't because we don't handle it the first time it comes to us. You know, like poor handling of money. Um poor handling of people that that we just keep in our lives and and they they create havoc but we still keep them okay we still keep them in our lives and so sometimes we have to pay attention to what it is we see or do we just make it where it's a blind spot where we don't see it we've elected not to see it we've elected not to see anything so this morning you know I'm going to start out with a poem and today's poem is by Pamela Susan and I got it off of Pinterest, and I just thought it was kind of cute. It's short, it's very, very short, but I think it's to the point. It says, I'm glad to be me. Good morning, Mary. It says, I'm glad to be me. I look in the mirror, and what do I see? I see the me no one else can be. See there, no one else can be. I am precious. I'm glad to be me. My hair, my face, my personality. My size, my shape, the color of my skin, all my makeup, me, outside and in. I, I like it. It says I'm glad to be me. And sometimes we're not always glad to be us. You know, and I think everybody has probably gone through that period, especially when we're younger. You know, we, we, we think we, we don't look good enough. We don't, um, 
we're not the right size. You know, we don't we don't get privileged with our skin or, or, or we, we, we see our skin as being too dark or too light, too something, too something. Um, we don't have the right hair texture, you know. So I'm talking about what do you see, not the see in others, the see in yourself. You know, we do have to be observant of others, too. Don't get me wrong. Don't get me wrong. You, you cannot let it go that you don't see who's looking at you or who's in your presence. Don't act like you don't see them because sometimes you act like they don't, you don't see them. And guess what? They have seen you picked up everything that you do, your, your way you walk, the way you talk, all the things that make you, you, they may be using, you know, because I have seen a few people that, you know, that's what they do. You know, they love it when they see people to mirror, you know, and they do that. And I think mirroring can be good in a good way, um, especially if it's, you know, intellectual or it's, you know, something that makes them, you know, just see that they can do things differently. And I tell you, coming up, I met people and I always thought that I was I, I wasn't gifted, but I thought that that God had given me a gift that I always met people who were smarter than me, you know. And it always gave me the idea that I could be smart. Sometimes just association. I'm always talking about that thing, association and accommodation. If you're associated with something, then you can accommodate it. If you make it your own, you make it where it works for you. You know, the, the ideology works for you. The concept works for you. You put it on and it, and it fits you. It feels good. It's like a layering. It's like a layering of, of, of fun. You know, I love people who can, who love to read and love to write and, and love to talk and discuss what they've read and have a view. Um, to me, that's exciting. That's exciting. But I, uh, don't get me wrong now, I also like to party a little bit. You know, dance, not much of a drink or anything, but I love to dance. I love to dance. So anyway, what do you see? Do you see yourself? Hope so. I hope so. So anyway, that was our poem for today. So we're going to break down the word C. And you know, um, as I do, I, I go right in. Good morning, Sharon. Good morning. Good morning to everybody. And so to see, I'm going to put them glasses so I can see. It says C is to perceive with the eyes and discern visuality. So, so you know, you're looking at something. But sometimes we don't see as clear as we should. You know, we may need glasses. And sometimes because there's the physical eye and then there's the eye that connects to the brain, which to me sometimes connects to the heart. So there's, you know, I think that they can have an eye, the eyes of the heart, the eyes of the brain, the eyes of the eyes, all looking at something. And to me, the level of, of respect, trust, love, care that you can give anything has to do with what you see in it. It has to do with what you see in it. If you don't see any worth in it, then it it may not be much for you. But anyway, so to see talks about it being a glimpse of something sometimes, a spot, a notice, a sight, a make out, a spy, you know, something that's distinguished, something that you recognize. It's like something that you detect, you note, and you, it says that you can also clock it. You, you, you're, you're watching it. You're watching it. You see it. You, you're watching the movement of it. What's it doing? Where's it going? Who's it for? If it's for you, you watch it more. So anyway, that's to see. So when we break the word C down and we start with the S, that's the sight of C. The sight is basically the faculty or power of seeing. That's what you do when you, when you see something, you have your own sight. And some of us, if we go to the physicality of it, then we're really looking at, are you 2020? Can you see 2020? You know, um, are you 2040? You know, 2050? I think I might've been 2,500. I swear I could not see a thing, not a thing. And, and, um, I used to cheat, <laughs> When they would do those little tests, I'd have my right eye read for my left eye, my right eye. And the doctor would always say, well, that's kind of unusual that you would have the same, you know, exact thing in both eyes. Sometimes there's a little variation, but I was cheating. 
And finally they found me out. But what they told my folks when I was little that I had um, basically a birth defect from being in a preemie. And a preemie in that instance in the 50s, they didn't know to put uh, turn the oxygen down or leave the oxygen at its level that was appropriate for my continued growth, but to cover my eyes. They do that now. You'll never see a child in, in an incubator and their eyes aren't covered because they know that the, the ultraviolet rays basically will, you know, will form uh, some problems with the eyes. So for me, looking at my sight, I understand what the sight is that I don't have. And for years, I never told anybody that I only had one eye. You know, all I have is peripheral vision in my right and my left eye. But after a while, I said, it is what it is. You know, I don't need somebody to give me a real difficult problem. And I only see with the one eye and I need to, you know, to, to be able to, to see clearly with both. So I couldn't take those kind of, kind of jobs or anything that required that kind of, of uh, scrutiny. But anyway, so sight looks at seeing, it looks at vision, it looks at the eyes, it looks at a visual perception of, of a problem. But also, you know, and I didn't write this down, you could also have your sight in terms of what you see in other things, not just the visual thing of it, but what you, what, how, how it makes you feel, you know, what you, you, you know, that you sighting, you saw something that, wow, you know. That was interesting. You know, I can, I can remember that. Uh, I remember that. The, the first E of C is for your evidence. When you see something, you have some evidence that you can put in to what you've seen. And so evidence really, good morning, sunshine. Evidence really looks at the available body of facts. These are things that you put together based on what you see or information indicating you know whether it's a belief or if it's a if it's a a, a a proposition or if it's true or valid you know sometimes we see things that we didn't really see okay especially if we're you know sick you know and and, and there may be something where we're kind of out of our head and we may be hallucinating a little bit because of the illness maybe a high fever has caused us where we're not really seeing things. And, and, and sometimes they also call it like when you get older, like elderly, they have like this thing called sundown. And sundown is, 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 it doesn't provide evidence of what you see. It's really evidence of what you don't see and that your, your dementia is probably increasing. So it really looks at, 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 at that type of sight is that people who have that uh, that sundown uh, diagnosis, they're seeing things that aren't really there. They may see things crawling, or they may see people that aren't there, or they may see, you know, um, things that would be unusual, like an elephant in a room. Those kinds of things really speak to what, what the evidence is and isn't based on it being a, a sundown diagnosis. But anyway, it talks about evidence in this case, if you can see, it talks about the proof of what you've seen, the confirmation, it's, a, it's the substantiation or it's the corroboration. All those things speak to what evidence you say you are seeing with. You're using that as your evidence. And you know, when you go to court, OJ, good morning, they always call you in. And when they call you in and you're a witness, they want to ask you, what did you see? What were you witness to? So seeing is all, so, so evidence is also your witnessing of what you saw. And sometimes people didn't see all the things because they said sometimes if we're, if we're fearful, we may have added some other things in there that weren't there only because we're fearful and maybe something that was so frightening. We saw some things, but we didn't see everything, you know. And you may have this, you, you may have seen this where, you will have a, a you know one incident that happened that several people were there for, and they have seven different views, seven different you know things that they saw. They 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 witnessed seeing something else. Their sight saw something different than someone else's, and so but it's the same incident. It's the same incident, and that just talks about you know the fact that 
that that evidence sometimes isn't isn't always a hundred percent it may be 50 percent or 75 percent because there may be a, an angle that you didn't see that something else was going on you know good morning yeah peace to you too sister um so anyway it really talks about what your evidence is of what you see and how well you see it in terms of your vision um the last word and i've used this word before i'm a i'm a wordy person i love words the last verse the last word for the e is elucidate and elucidate means making something clear being able to explain it being able to illuminate on it clarify it ex give an explanation gloss on it you know ma make an, an annotation clearing it up what it is that you saw re being resolved being unraveled and untangling what it is that you're seeing and sometimes we don't always do that because we first of all we may be stopped on evidence we don't know what we saw okay or the sight may have went blurry for a minute or we may have even had like what i call a brief minute of panic and during the panic something else happened that we didn't even see so so um elucidate is 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 something it was when you're making something clear to be able to explain it and sometimes we don't see it all we just do not we make a good attempt at it but we don't we don't see it we don't see it but um i love that word and elucidate you know the fact that it, it is something that to me just talks about illuminating on something you know it gives opportunity for you to to go into you know what i call your your visual perception and and figure out well what is it that i saw you know and a lot of times they that's why police officers um and and lawyers and all those they want to talk to you as soon as the incident occurred you know as quickly as they can and the reason being is because the memory can fade visual memory fades especially if it's something horrific you know um sometimes you just remember the final scene but you don't remember the other scenes that you might have been there and been a part of so you only see the end you know you don't see everything leading up to it and 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 so that makes it where you know you can give some evidence you know in terms of what you saw but you can't get a give it all you can just say that this is all i recall you know this is all i recall and to make it clear you know what i tell people if you're really you know thinking that you might be a witness or you might be um you know on any kind of assignment take notes take notes certainly the the cameras right now are, are probably the best they are the best captures of what is being seen you know through the sight of starting with the camera's eye to eventually becoming your eye and if it's some real evidence such as in the case like of of uh, George Floyd's death um there it is it's it's it it's evidence it becomes evidence and so in that case everyone could probably come up with an elucidate uh, elucidating remark regarding what happened because the the camera kept rolling and so sometimes i tell people take your camera take your camera with you i always have my camera with me now i didn't used to you know it didn't become a necessity uh until probably the last maybe four years prior to that i'd forget it i'd leave it in a store i'd do something with it because it wasn't it wasn't made to be as essential as it has become now now everything's in it you know it might keep track of when i'm supposed to do a zoom meeting or when I'm supposed to do a physical meeting or or you know when I have a, a a a project due you know a due date so those are the kinds of things I use my phone for now I don't have an iPhone which which I think is really cute I have an Android I'm an Android girl but anyway so to see really looks at you know what you perceive from what you're looking at visually you know but I want you to turn it around and looking at yourself. You know, what do you see in yourself? How do you see yourself? Do you see yourself as being uh, powerless or powerful? Do you see yourself as being 
um, excited, not excited? Do you see yourself as being, you know, in a planning stage or in a holding stage? Uh, you know, all those things speak to your your sight of yourself, your, what you see, you know, what you see for you. Because what you see for you, can't, nobody else can see that. That's why it is personal, you know. People may help you see some things, but they can't help you see everything. They may show you, oh, you know, to find this, you know, you have to go over three streets and go to... You know, see once you see this landmark, that's where it is. That's good, but until you go and make your own way there, you may, you may say, "Well, I don't, I don't know about all of that." You know, I'm an Android girl too. Thank you, Ashley. <laughs> but anyway, those are the the three. Uh, good morning, T. Happy birthday, T. Everybody, wave at T and tell T hi. Good morning, Georgia. So anyway. This is the exciting thing about what I try to do every day is show you how things connect. Just show you how they all connect. Um, and they connect in such a way that I, I've been doing this for years as a, as a trainer, that sometimes we don't realize that we, we have power in what we see, what we do with what we see, and where we want to go uh, with it, you know. What we what we where we want to go? How do we want to do it? You know, uh, and sometimes we we're afraid to to step out. We're afraid, we're afraid. But I'm telling you, all things if you stay with them long enough, you can make them have a connection, or at least an association, which makes them work for you. It makes them work for you. So even though I know um, my friend T and Sharon are coming in late. I'm at my question section this morning. I know I'm usually longer than this. But um, here's the questions for today. It's all about what you see, you know. And here's what you see. It says, a question number one, what do you see for your future? You know, I don't care if you are, you know, 15, 25, 45, 85, 105. Every day, my prayer for you is that you have a plan. You know, even if it's I'm going to get up, I'm going to make myself breakfast, I'm going to, you know, put on my clothes, I'm going to do a walk to the corner and back, I'm going to pick up the mail, I'm going to let the dog out, whatever. Uh, that, that's your plan. That's your plan. But the point is, is that you're not just sitting and waiting on nothing. You know, wait in, in activity, wait in seeing things, wait in doing things, wait in being excited about what's next. You know, what is next for me? That's what I'm, that's the question for you. What's next in me? How do I see it working? And says, what, and what sites do you want to see along the way? You know, if you know you want to, you know, maybe, you know, take a ride to, you know, social distancing, take a ride to the beach. What do you hope to see once you get to the beach? You know, do you want to go and have, you know, um, uh, lunch at Flounders? You know, do you just want to walk on the, on the boardwalk or do you want to just walk on the beach with sand in your shoes? You know, what do you want to do? What do you want to do? And, and, and the sights would be, you know, you hope to see the water, you know, you hope to, to hear the, the clashing of the waves. You know, you hope to um, smell the fresh air. You know, instead of being enclosed up, you feel all the openness. Those could be all the sights you want to see along your way of your day. The third question is, what evidence do you have based on your sight and what you see for yourself? What's the evidence? What is your evidence about what you've seen in the past to where you are right now? What do you see for yourself? And are you planning for the future? So once again, I'm always going to keep coming back to you, always. You know, what would you plan for your future? And how do you see yourself? You know, well, I, I'm going to tell you, I'm going to give you mine real quick. What I see for my future is being more busy only because 
I believe my, as I told you, my mother um, every day got up as if she had a job and my mother not died three weeks shy of being 95 um, and she walked and walked and walked. We called her Road Runner Lily. And the reason we called her that is because she walked between eight and 10 miles every day, every single day. And she always got up as if she had a job to do. She got up, she bathed, she ate her breakfast, took her medicine, and then she started out. And if I called her too late from Florida, she lived in New York. If I called her too late, it ticked her off. She said, look, I got to go. I got things to do. I don't have time to be talking to you. I already did this, did that, did the other thing. I'm ready to go. So so I had to either call her earlier or uh, wait until I got her about 6.30 that night. So she acted as if she had a 9 to 5. Actually, for her, it would have been a 6.30 to 6.30 job every day. And that's, that's my, that is how I act. I act like every day I have something to do. But the thing about the difference between my mother and myself is that I literally took her, her lead and I literally have something every day to do every single day. You know, when I finish with you all, I got something to do. But finishing up what I was talking about for my plans, I hope to, to, you know, figure out how to, my equipment came in, how to start my podcast. So that's my next thing on my agenda. And the, uh, the book, you know, Al's 10 fingers, he used them to play music, um, should be up on Amazon by the latter part of this week or the beginning of next week. So that's done too, you know, so I'm, I'm busy, I'm busy, you know, so when I don't feel good, you know, I know I can't give you my best, so I'm going to do my best. Maurice, it's great to see you. And it was interesting. Y'all have to go to Maurice's, <laughs> Maurice's um, tapings on the worshiping, uh, he's the worshiping usher during a uh, pandemic. And I tell you, yesterday, y'all just have to go watch. Y'all watch. Y'all watch. You know, <laughs> the church wasn't full yesterday. <laughs> so anyway, he acts out everything as the, as the usher. And it's always so great. I love it. I love it. Stay productive. That's right, Ashley. You have to stay productive. The last word in our um, in question is number four. And it says, can you, it says, can you elucidate, which means to make something clear um, of what you see ahead for yourself can you elucidate that can you make it your own can you can you anchor it down can you say I have this to do and this is what I'm working on you know I have this place to go and this is how I'm going to get there I have this thing to see and this is when it's going to happen you know sometimes we start out well but because we never give it an anchor it never lands it just keeps floating along so what I'm saying to you is put some Put some, some, don't put just legs on it. Let the legs be sturdy enough to hold down whatever it is that you want to do. Okay, I would like to see hate eradicated. Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. I really enjoy worshiping the worshiping usher. Me too. Me too. So, so what I'm saying is, is that when you look at yourself, oh, that's okay, Carolyn. Don't even worry about it. You can always play these videos back. You can play them back. Um, what I'm saying to you is don't worry about what others are doing. Make your own plan every day and, and try to, try to stay with it. And, and if you, if you fall short on it today, guess what? It's a part of tomorrow's plan. It's a part of tomorrow's plan. And then when you need to rest, like I did on Friday, rest, don't give any excuses, just rest. You know, sometimes we are shut down for a reason. We need to. We need to shut it down. We need to get our rest. We need to acknowledge that 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 we don't we can't do everything. And OJ says, and in the process, the universe has a sense of humor. Yes, it does. Absolutely. It does. It will laugh back at you, you know, when you continue trying to move and move and move, and it'll keep giving you stuff, but you sometimes have to pause long enough to say, be still, understand, and know that you can't be in control of everything. Sometimes you have to give it up 
anchor to let it all come back down. To rest, to find your peace, and to see who you are. And sometimes once you get rest, you see better. Am I lying? Y'all know I'm telling the truth. When you rest on a subject, sometimes that's the best way for me to do things. Is is if is if it keeps giving me trouble, giving me trouble, you know, I have to rest on it. When I was getting my doctorate, you know, in the middle of the night, I think I told you, I would be up just crazy as I could be. And then I'd go to work and work all day all day long, all day. And then I'd come back home, get a small bite to eat, and still do my work. But what I was doing is that I was fueling the idea that I had to finish. That was good in terms of what I saw for myself. But on the bottom side of it, eventually, I shut it all down. And guess what? When you shut your brain down, your sight down, turn off everything, you will wake up clear. You will wake up absolutely clear, you know, especially if you do it right. It says you have to chill out sometimes. Absolutely, T, you do. You have to chill out. You have to just say, I, I can't deal with this right now. You know, I'm going to go to bed. I'm, I'm going to get some rest. You know, I'm going to let the TV work for me. I'm going to let it give me some humor. Give me something funny to laugh at. And then I'm going to rest and then I'll get back up. And sometimes that's when you are the clearest. You said you're the clearest when you've rested. Sometimes the mind just has to have time to back off all of your commitments. Back off all it's seen. Back off all you're doing you know, all you're about. It just needs that peace, that solaceness, you know, what I used to call it, that rustication of just, you know, you in the wilderness of nothing going on. Nothing. Sometimes you can just hear the crickets, hear the bees, you know, Hear the bugs buzzing around. That's it. You know, that's it. Sometimes when it's raining, I just want the house really quiet and I just listen to the rain. You know, when I go to the beach, I love the same thing. Jesus rested. Yes, right. Absolutely. Jesus rested. We should. It says, it says, Jesus rested. We should too. I remind myself of from time to time. And, and that's true. From time to time. No matter, and, and Ashley's really young. You know, so I'm talking from an old standpoint. But Ashley's young, and Ashley has even learned that you have to read. Oh, it says, thank you, thank you. You told me exactly what I needed to hear. Oh, oh, Jack. please come back. Continue to come. Spread this around. That uh, this is, I don't know, for some reason, he, God gave it to me. So I keep bringing it out every day. I dig deep at night, sit down, write it all up, and come with y'all in the morning with something he gave me. And I sleep on it. And I tell you, I've told you all this before. Sometimes I've gone to sleep with one thing and I wake up and he's giving me something. Yeah. Ready to be declined. I forgot to turn that off. I apologize. Personal solitude. Absolutely. Sometimes that's the only way we get to a point where we can be at peace is if we look for it. We search it out. And then we don't answer the phone. We don't, you know, turn on the TV. We don't answer the doorbell. I don't answer that anyway. But anyway, I'm just saying, <laughs> you know, find your peace. Determine what you're seeing. You know, be diligent about what, what's in your sight, you know. Because sometimes we see things we don't want to see. We hang out with things we don't need to hang out with, you know. And sometimes we see too much, <laughs> But look at your sight, look at what you're seeing, you know, certainly look at the evidence of what it is you're seeing, because sometimes what you're seeing isn't right. You know, we may even give a, you know, a description of what you really didn't see, you know. Um, so be clear, be clear, you know, you know, make it where it, you, you can elucidate on it. You can really look at it and make it so clear that when you're talking about what you see and what you saw uh, in the past tense, it's, it's it. That's it. That's 
That's it. That, that's right, OJ. You can certainly contact me. In fact, if anybody needs to contact me, send me a text first because I don't pick. I get a lot of robocalls. I, I keep trying to, to stop them in AT&T. They, and some of them aren't very nice um, because they're just trying to, to, to mess up your day. But um, if you would just text me and say, this is OJ, this is whomever, then I'll call you back and I'll store your number. Okay, but anyway, I want you all to have a great day. I hope you enjoyed this lesson on C and how important it is. I'm going to read that poem that I read at the beginning. I'm glad to be me, and it's by Pamela Susan. I just thought it was just so cute. I look in the mirror, and what do I see? I see the me no one else can be. I am precious. I am glad to be me. My hair, my face, my personality, my size, my shape, my co the color of my skin, all make up me, outside and in. I want you to have a wonderful day. I want you to be blessed. I want you to pay attention to what you see. I want you to make sure that you have evidence of what it is and the importance of it, what it does for you or doesn't. And then when it's time to explain it, be able to make it where you can, you know, elucidate, eluc excuse me, elucidate the information that is clear to someone else if you're explaining it, but more so clear to yourself. I'll see you tomorrow at 9 on Facebook Live. I appreciate everything that you do. Please come back. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye-bye. Have a good day.